Okay, we're live. Well, um, thank you everyone for coming. Um, this is uh, um, MAP Family Learning Center um, hosted event. Um, today is April 11th um, and we are celebrating the kite guitar, um, which uh, they'll get more into the details, but um, there's 41 equal divisions of the octave. So, you know, we usually do our uh, concerts and, uh, you know, lecture demos like we're, what we're having today on a Sunday and April 11th, 411 happened to be a Sunday. So I was like, why not that day? <laughs> um, so MAP Family Learning Center, MAP uh, stands for Music, Art and Programming. And uh, we give classes um, uh, and instruction in all three, music, art, and programming. And we have some students here today um, who are going to present two students, um, Henry and Suri. Um, they've done some uh, projects that integrate um, uh, all three, music, art, and programming. And uh, this is also, uh, this event is also part of our uh, ongoing um, crowdfunding campaign to create music plus code videos. Um, so I'll put a little link out there, um, but I encourage you to check it out. The idea is to um, have music teachers, um, if you can imagine, teach programming. <laughs> and uh, we, um, and Walter's here today, we together created a visual programming language for music. And you'll see a little bit of it at the very beginning um, from the students called Music Blocks. Um, and, uh, you know, we think that it'd be great to have uh, music teachers um, use this tool in the classroom to teach programming and music. Um, so I hope you check it out. Um, and if you're able to support, please do so. And supporting can include just sharing the link. Um, so, um, you know, please check that out. Great. So let's just start now with Henry. Henry. So Henry is... Um, in our Saturday morning class. Can you introduce yourself, Henry, and your project? Hi. Um, your name? My name's Henry. Let me share my screen. Is Henry sharing his screen? Yes, please. Okay. And don't forget the sound. Uh, share audio. Share. Um, so, this is this is like a this program is called um, Mouse Let's Climb, and um, I'm gonna play it first. So you have your mouse, and you use the arrow keys to walk around. If you get hit by an icicle or the bird, then you get sent back home. Like that. Um, and this icicle, like that's right outside your home, keeps getting faster and faster. And you have to like dodge all the icicles. I'm trying. And once you get to the cheese, it like plays this. <laughs> um, and yeah, so now I'm going to show you the blocks. Um, so here's the trees, um, and it, it, um, box, it like sets box two to zero, which will keep the score and, um, and it, um, sets it to like pen up so it doesn't draw on the screen. Um, and it shows the whole mountain, like it it shows the whole mountain, like the background, which is actually Mount Everest. And it sets its avatar to a, a slice of cheese. It sets it um, X and Y, which um, is, which is like where it is on the screen, its location on the screen. Um, it sets it like 85% to the, to the left of the screen 
and 53% to the top of the screen. And it sets the instrument to guitar. And forever it's checking if the distance between Henry, which um, is the mouse, is um, greater th uh, um, in the distance of um, of um, the, the trees um, yes. is less than 100. Then it, if, if, if it is less than 100, then it plays an action called Henry's Here. Also, it adds one to box two, which is your score. Then at the bottom, it prints um, box. It prints your score, which, you know, box two. Mm -hmm. And here's the action Henry is here. Um, it it um, adds one to box one again, which is a, a bug <laughs> that we need to fix. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> Uh, then it sets the instrument to piano. I don't know why we set it to guitar here, but it sets the instrument to piano, and um, it plays dun dun dun. And then there's another bug where it goes this is like randomly plays a bunch of notes. Um, yeah, for that I think you might need the no clock block. Oh. <laughs> Just say this part. But actually, it sounded very interesting. Um, each of the, like each thing, like when you play it, um, like the icicles, the bird and everything, they, they all have their own start block. And to do that, I, I started out with, oh no, where did he go? I don't see him. I started out with icy and then I duplicated him. And I duplicated him again and like tweak them. Um, but they all technically do the same thing. If you if you hit them, then you go you go back to to the start, and basically you get to cheese as many times as you can. And yeah, it's great. Um, let's all if you want to unmute and. Give Henry a round of applause, I think. <laughs> Yay! That is a very fun game, Henry. Um, I look forward to um, continued improvements and iterations. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, great. So um, that's that's Henry's project. I'm I'm blown away. <laughs> um, um, I I guess I forgot to introduce myself. Um, my name's Devin. A lot of my teachers know me as Mr. Devin. Um, I'm a guitar teacher. Um, and next up is one of my students who uh, is uh, taking lessons in guitar <laughs> from me, as well as um music blocks classes and she is going to show um her project which um will help us kind of segue to today's topic um so sorry if you can unmic and uh share your screen that would be great and introduce uh, yourself right. uh, um my name is suri and uh um and and Made this uh, project that's um, and I set the temperament to five Edo or five Edo uh, equal divisions, and um, I made a song from it. Uh, and so uh, I'll just play it. <laughs> yeah.
Yay! <laughs> okay. Uh, so, okay, so now I'm going to explain how all this works. So basically, um, so basically all of these, the A1, A2, and stuff, these are all um, action blocks. And so each, so each of them have all the, like, they're different parts of the um, piece. And, um, and I also, and I just, like, and I just arrange them in a way, like, um, I just arrange them in, like, in a way that I felt, like, I make it sound good. And, um, this, um, this part it has a repeat block and um so it, and it's here it, the input is two so it repeats two times um all these blocks in here and the no clock block is just uh to make sure it plays correctly um um yeah can you show us the temperament stuff right there i think that's okay. like yeah. Oh yeah, here, here. Okay then. Oh, it's not oh wait, I need to set it. Um you cleared this. Uh this is how I made the temperament. Um five okay. No, you you had it. Yeah, this is okay. And then preview. Okay. Uh, okay. And now these are the notes that. Okay, so those were the notes that I used. Um, to play uh, to, in that um, piece, and it's equally um, and it's equally divided into like five different um, parts. Yeah, um, that's great. And, and then you can see the math of uh, how you do those five divisions down there um, with the exponents, and uh, great. Um, so let's give uh, Suri a, a round of applause, another round of applause. That's great. So um, already Suri introduced a few words that um, the Kite folks are going to um, expand upon um, and dig a little bit deeper into um, in uh, their presentation. Um, I, I want to tell everybody how um, I became introduced to um, the kite guitar and, um, you know, the kite team. <laughs> um, uh, I became aware of this through a person named Aaron Wolf, who's presenting today. He's a musician um, and a very, very thoughtful person. Um, he was introduced to me um, by a mutual friend. Um, because we both work in music as well as flow. And uh, flow stands for free, libre, and open. Um, and that's the term that, that they use and uh, kind of prefer to use. Um, and uh, I think Aaron and I both believe flow is important for education and culture. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that the kite guitar is a novel, innovative flow initiative. So I wanted to share it with everyone here. Um, the one thing I'll say about Aaron is whatever he's working on is is really great. <laughs> so I hope that you um, you know kind of like follow his work, um, and uh, maybe you can share a le link to his uh, his website, which is an awesome website. And he's you know with a lot of different initiatives. Um, one of which is Snowdrift. Um, so I hope he shares that, um, and I'll try to find the link and share it. Um, and I'll just say one little tidbit. When, when Aaron first sent the link for the kite guitar, um, I saw a picture of it and I was like, why is he sending me a picture of an eight string guitar? I've seen eight string guitars. <laughs> but you know, because it's Aaron, I thought it can't just be that simple. There's gotta be something else here. 
Um, and I went back to the website and started reading it. And I was like, wow, this is really amazing. Um, so um, I, I do want to say one thing. Um, so the way that they're going to do this, because they wanted to, to show everybody at the same time on the same screen and have some visuals, um, I'm going to stream them. They are live. <laughs> There's a latency of like, um, I don't know, seven to 15 seconds, you know, um, roughly the time it takes, you know, for the uh, light from the moon to uh, reach planet Earth. <laughs> um, and uh, you, uh, you know, but but they are live. So I'm going to start that right now. Um, I've got the link here and I'm going to share it. They're in another Jitsi room. <laughs> and they are live streaming, and I'm going to pick up their stream. Okay, but this is live. Got it. I'm going to double check to make sure I'm putting the right thing in. Okay, here we go. Enjoy. All right. All right. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and assume, assume that you can, you hear, can me. hear me. Uh, so, uh, so this, this is, is the global, global premiere of an instrument, an instrument that was that discovered almost exactly, almost exactly two, two years, years ago. ago. Uh, it was uh, so it was much so of a revelation that I became, became a microtonalist and, and a luthier in order to, to help, help bring these bring instruments into existence. Into existence. There's about 20-some in the world. In the world. I'm, actually I'm actually responsible for seven, for seven of, them. of them. And I want to let you all know this is a live version of a script that's been in the works for more than a year. We will be publishing that video in the near future. In the meantime, this is the first time doing anything live like this. We're coming at you from four different houses in the Portland area, running through OBS in my... Uh, uh, computer, computer, which is which a GNU, is GNU Linux, Linux, by the way, by the way. Flow, flow, speaking, speaking of, flow, of flow, freely, freely open. open. Um, and, and let's see. So, yeah, so, yeah as he mentioned, mentioned, we're on a Jitsi, on a Jitsi call. call. I'm, running I'm running through OBS. Through OBS. And, and if anything, if anything goes, goes wrong, wrong, go ahead and go blame, and blame the, internet. the internet. Thanks for Thanks coming. For coming. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kite. And I'm Aaron. And I'm Timmy. And we're here to show you the revolutionary new kite guitar. It combines the beauty of just intonation with the freedom of. Oh, oh. Hold, Hold on, on one, one second. second. I actually, I actually lost, lost the, audio. the audio. Oh, really? I yeah. lost, I lost kite. kite. No way. Excuse, Excuse me, me technical, technical difficulties. difficulties. One, One second, second everyone. everyone. Oh. Oh, They're, they're working on it. We got totally disconnected. I'm going to have to uh, deal with that. So hang on for a moment. Thank you very much.
ultimate technical difficulties. Naturally, this is a totally a problem that has never happened before like this. So, <laughs> uh, appreciate everyone's uh, patience here. We should be back in business momentarily. Good timing rather than interrupting in the middle of the flow. Yeah, yeah. This, we're just, we're going to take a mulligan, everyone. Appreciate that. And uh, I did hear there's some echo when I speak, but don't worry, I won't be speaking very much. Okay. Good to go. Good to go. <laughs> take it away. Take it away. Where from? Uh, From the yeah, top, we're gonna uh, do. Hello, we're I'm still start. Timmy. <laughs> and I'm still Kite. I'm still Aaron. And we're here to show you the revolutionary new Kite guitar. It combines the beauty of just intonation with the freedom of an equal temperament. I'm telling that the chords sound cleaner thanks to high-resolution tuning, which has more notes than a regular guitar. Today, we'll explain why tuning has been such a thorny problem for centuries, and how the Kite guitar mostly solves this age-old issue. And we'll explore how the kite guitar opens up new musical dimensions. The tuning issues that we'll cover apply to all sorts of instruments, not just guitars. And notice the guitar, the kite guitar is not some patented product. Anyone can make one. And we're sharing all our ideas freely and openly. On with the show. The harmonic, the harmonic series. series. To understand tuning basics, we'll start with harmonics. Any vibrating string includes within it a whole set of pitches called a harmonic series. Here it is on low E on a standard guitar. Touching the string at a certain spot brings out one harmonic by dampening the others. The harmonic is still there in the open string whether I isolate it or not. I'll play the open string and touch it after. Can you hear this note inside this note? Here, I'll gradually fade in the open string. Each step of the harmonic series is different. It starts with the octave, then the fifth, the fourth, then thirds. They get smaller and smaller until it becomes seconds, and even smaller. When playing harmonics, it helps to use a pick, pick close to the bridge, and on electric guitar, use the bridge pickup. Distortion also helps. On most guitars, frets are placed according to 12-tone equal temperament, the standard tuning for modern Western music. But there's a problem. It's not quite in tune with the harmonics. Harmonics 4, 5, and 6 make a major chord. Here are the closest fretted notes. The fretted pitches are close, but notice the major third in the chord. That's harmonic five. The fretted note is slightly sharper than the harmonic. The difference is subtle and it's hard to hear through computer speakers. That's why we're using electric guitar today. Try this on your own. When a fourth is in tune, certain harmonics on one string match certain harmonics on the other. 
But if the interval is, oh, sorry. Uh, but if the interval is out of tune, you get interference beats. These are caused by the harmonics not exactly lining up. And then I listen to these to know how to tune. So you can listen to them go away as I tune the string back. That's the fourth. Let's look at a major third. You would think certain harmonics would coincide here too, but they don't. And when you play the two strings normally, you can still hear those interference beats. <laughs> you know, it's understandable if you've never noticed this before. It's omnipresent, like the sound of a freeway when you've lived next to it for so long you don't hear it anymore. And this isn't about nut compensation or guitar setup. It's not even specific to guitar. This is a feature of 12-tone equal temperament. We can make the interference beats go away by detuning. When all the harmonics line up, oh, we're gonna play it. Oops. Here, let's hear it again. Nice major third. When all the harmonics line up like that, that's called just intonation, or J-I for short. It feels smooth and relaxed. We can play the same interval in standard tuning by using a string that we didn't detune, and that will feel more tense. So to do this uh, on your own guitar, flatten your B string by about 14 cents. Put this sweet third in a full G chord and it sounds great. So let's compare standard and just. Unfortunately, while a G chord is improved, detuning that one string makes most other chords much worse. Now the E chord has a bad fifth and a bad octave. So for the sake of these other chords, we have to settle for a rougher G to B interval. And that's why it's so hard to tune a guitar by ear. You can't get all the chords in tune at the same time. But on a kite guitar, it matches, the harmonics are much more close to the fretted notes. The fretted notes are closer to the harmonics. So. And that makes all the chords blend a lot better. By the way, the layout of a kite guitar is not the same as a standard guitar. It's usually tuned in all thirds. And we'll talk more about that later. So what about fourths and fifths? They're already quite good in standard tuning. On the kite guitar, they're even better, near perfect, assuming I've got my guitar at least pretty well in tune.
So let's go further up the harmonic series. The next harmonic is the seventh one. By coincidence, harmonic seven actually is the seventh, but it's really flat of standard tuning. So some people hear it as out of tune at first. So this will really mess up the- Oh, oh you, sorry. sorry. You didn't detune yet. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. I, yeah. So let's add the harmonic seven to our G chord. We already detuned the B string by 14 cents. Next, detune the high E by 31 cents. This will really mess up the other chords. But now our G7 matches the harmonic series. Let's compare that with standard tuning. Notice how that rather flat seventh makes the chord smoother. So the dominant seventh chord in standard tuning feels tense because both the third and the seventh are out of tune with the harmonic series. And that is one reason why classical music theory teaches that dominant chords need to resolve to a simpler chord. And like the third, the seventh on the kite guitar is really well tuned. Oh. All right, down here. And so that more relaxed seventh chord has less tension and less need to resolve. But I can still play the, the cadence if I want to. Again, it can take some time to get used to that seventh. For a more traditional sound, you can stick to the intervals found among the first six harmonics. Harmonic seven has a more novel sound. Some people get used to that new sound right away, but if you still feel uncomfortable, just keep an open mind, it might grow on you. You can hear that seventh sound in barbershop harmony and some African music. It works particularly well in a blues context where it's normal for dominant seventh chords not to resolve. Okay, so here's a good way to explore the harmonic seventh chord on a standard guitar. Get the E7 chord really in tune by detuning the second and third string. Then you can just slide that E7 shape up and down the fretboard. Okay, so I'm gonna take this shape, which is a familiar seven chord, and I'm gonna detune like this. There's the third, and here's the seventh. And there's a detuning by 14 cents and 31 cents there. Yep.
this is a great sound, but it's kind of a one trick pony. You just got this one shape and this one sort of chord and that's it. So your options are pretty limited in terms of what to do with this. Uh, and make sure not to lift up your fourth finger. Now, there's other ways to access that nice blended seventh sound. You could tune it to it all open strings and use a slide. You could get the harmonic seven by going back a fret and bending up. So here's the tempered one and I can go back here. has certain limitations, but it's a great sound that lets you start exploring. And I really find there's something just almost peaceful and meditative about these nice J.I. chords. So here's a power chord in standard tuning. Uh, not hearing a lot of distortion. Oh, yeah, of course. This would be better. <laughs> Rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's a power chord. Compare that to a major chord. Or a seventh chord. These two chords sound so dissonant because the, the, the distortion brings out the clashing harmonics. This is why hard rock often sticks to power chords. Octaves and fifths are well-tuned, but thirds and sevenths aren't. Now that B tuning trick I just used a moment ago, that one lets you still work with distortion and it blends. Oh, let me go with an actual heavier distortion. Here we go. So there's more going on than just harmonics. Playing any two notes at once creates what's called a difference tone. For example, 300 hertz and 200 hertz make a 100 hertz difference tone. These tones are present on all instruments. They're usually quite faint, but distortion really brings them out. Bass, it's the same as the low E string. Listen again. The low E is there, but I'm not playing it. The B string is harmonic three of that low E, and the high E string is harmonic four. The difference of three and four is one, so we get the first harmonic, the fundamental. So uh, check this out. I'm going to play. With. Now check what happens when I play them together. So can you hear when my lower note goes up a second, my new bass line goes down a fourth. I don't need a bass player. If you move it, try it down an octave. Oh, that's right. So if I go down an octave, the guitar can play notes outside of its range in the bass range. So each note has higher harmonics and every pair of harmonics creates their own difference tones. So there's a lot of difference tones. When the notes of a chord are in tune with a harmonic series, so are the difference tones. In fact, they generate all the other notes of the harmonic series. Back to my riff. So because fourths and fifths on a standard guitar are so well tuned, like that's how this works so well. But 
thirds aren't so great, so they don't really work as well. <laughs> okay, so on the kite guitar, this is an electric version, six strings. Uh, thirds are actually pretty close to harmonics, so they can work with full distortion. And so I'm just playing two strings and you basically hear the whole chord. So on a standard guitar with distortion, anything beyond power chords has a lot of jumbled out of tuneness. But on a kite guitar, I can play anything that fits the harmonic series. So here's harmonics five and seven at the same time. Well, I'll play them one at a time. Here they are. And together. And I get that difference tone in the whole rest of the harmonic series. And because it's the entire thing, if I play different parts of that same harmonic series on the guitar, it just emphasizes different parts of the mix. It's almost like a timbre change, kind of like a, a moving filter on a, some synth. Again, if you're finding, if you're still finding the seventh chord strange, sorry, seventh harmonic strange, you gotta admit it makes the chord work better. Okay, that's the noisy seventh on the standard tuning, and here's the kite guitar. No, no, something's wrong with my tuning. Just a moment. Still have to get tune. all the benefits. I got to get the guitar in tune. <laughs> okay, I think it's better. It sounds better than my chord. That's closer. I'll play it with the different strings. Yeah, it's pretty blended. Yeah. So compare, compare it to Timmy's. <laughs> <laughs> so I originally got into that sound, that blended seventh, from singing Barbershop Harmony. And I was looking for years for how to get that blended sound on a regular guitar. So I tried guitars with different partial frets and close frets that are like tuned to just intonation, but that's specific to a certain key. So even though chords can sound great, it, you can't really move around in different ways. I couldn't play a full arrangement. And it's, it's just, you know, it's got some advantages and disadvantages. It's a little confusing. So that's why we have equal temperaments. They let you play in any key and modulate to any key. Standard 12-tone equal temperament divides the octave into 12 equal steps. Any equal division of the octave is called EDO, or EDO for short. So 12 equal is also called 12 EDO. And in EDO, all intervals are the same in all keys. And that certainly has advantages, but with the best ones like 19 Edo and 22 Edo, those are close to JI, but some intervals are better than 12 and some are worse. And 31 is a pretty good one, but the fifth is noticeably flat and it's a lot of frets, 31 frets kind of, uh, that's a little intimidating. Uh, and, you know, I ended up getting a fretless guitar and that is, Works great, you can play anything, and I can get in tune. It's great for melodies. But it's really hard to play quick chord changes. So I thought what I wanted to do, play really blended barbershop chords on a guitar, was just impossible. There was just trade-offs no matter which way I looked. But this can do it. Here it is. Speaking of barbershop. Give me that sweet, oh, sweet, 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 s
come through okay uh, hopefully that, the sound came through we didn't hear it <laughs> we looked good though so how does the kite guitar accomplish all this well i'm going to show you that i can do this on the kite guitar i can oh, play right, the right, tag sorry. we just did today so here it is on the guitar actually here let me get a just little sound update here somewhat through a little more cleanly How does the kite guitar accomplish all this? 41 Edo. 41 is the first Edo that improves all intervals over 12 Edo. Now, you could try the full 41 frets per octave. That's a lot of frets. <laughs> Instead, the kite guitar omits half of them. Each string has half the notes. <laughs> but the next string has the other half. The full 41 notes are just spread out over two strings. This works because the interval between open strings is tuned to an odd number of Edo steps, in this case, 13. Yeah, so here's two Edo steps, meaning one a step of 41 Edo, two steps here. That's about 60 cents. But the notes that are nearest in pitch from the 41 are actually physically far away on this guitar. So it's over here. And these Edo steps are only 29 cents each. <laughs> Such a bargain. <laughs> uh, here, here's the fifth. And so I, that's pretty close. And here's an up fifth. Ooh, that last one sounds really off. We call that an off perfect interval. It's one Edo step away from perfect. Off perfect intervals are historically called wolf intervals for their howling dissonance. Yeah, it's pretty shaky. So octaves could be off too, off perfect, like this. There's an up octave. <laughs> or a down octave. If I'm looking for the octave here, it's not actually on that string at all. It's over here. And it's kind of nice because it's really easy to reach and the other one's hard. So basically yeah. if we had all 41 frets, these off perfect intervals would be right next to the perfect ones where they'd be easy to play by mistake. Instead, they're moved safely out of the way. Miraculously, this only works in 41, and all the building blocks for the chords are easy to reach. And so all the intervals from the first 10 harmonics are right under my fingers. And this trick doesn't work for most Edos. It really only works with 41, by this, and which by incredible coincidence just happens to be one of the best tuned Edos. Let's explore how it, yeah. So what notes does 41 Edo have? Well, let's start with 12 Edo for comparison. Um, this chart shows the sense, the interval names, the note names. Um, for standard 12, yeah. Basic stuff. So now let's look at 41 Edo. Okay, this is a lot. Don't worry. We'll just this will be online, and you can uh, study it in your own time. <laughs> but read down the first column, and then read up the second column. You get some sense of the uh, the magnitude of notes in forty one. It's like a painter with a huge palette of colors, and with so many notes, we need to expand the usual note names and interval names. So we use ups and downs, which take you up or down one Edo step. So we have C sharp. And above C sharp, there's up C sharp, and below it, there's down C sharp. 
And notice that C sharp and D flat are two different pitches in the system. Okay, so plain means no ups or downs. So we have C, we have up C sharp, and then you might want to say plain C sharp, like you might say C sharp and C natural. Um, so plain notes are the closest to 12 Edo. Uh, let's just talk about how things add up. Plain intervals add up as usual. So from G to A is a major second. And from C to a And so instead, the standard most common tuning we use for the kite guitar is all thirds, down major thirds specifically. And fortunately, that makes it isomorphic, which means same shape. So you can move any chord shape around in any direction. And that really greatly speeds up learning your way around. With 12 Edo, the, the open strings all fit into the common keys of C, G, D, A minor, and E minor. So using the open strings works pretty well. But when you tune in thirds, 
it's not so practical because the open strings don't all fit into any one key. And that also reduces the range of the instrument, which is why this beast of an eight string guitar is one of the ways to go. Uh, but six still works. So besides this, this uh, standard tuning of, of uh, down major thirds, there are many alternate tunings. You could tune in up minor thirds. There are also some cool open tunings like dad gad. We'll cover those next time. Open tunings aren't as flexible for chord progressions, but they're great for melodies and riffs. The down major chord. So any two complementary thirds add up to a fifth. That's standard music theory. Major and minor complement each other. And in this case, it works out. So do up and down. So a down major third. Let's get a diagram here. Wait a moment. Is that coming? There we go. So because it's tuned to down major third, that's a down major third. Plus an up minor third from there gets us a perfect fifth. And together, that's a down major triad. You know, in standard music theory, a D major chord is often can be called a D chord for short. Similarly, a D down major chord, we often call a D down chord for short, or even just D if we know the context. On the kite guitar, a fourth is always one string over and two frets up. And so since a fourth and a fifth make an octave, the octave is three strings over and one fret up. So once you know the octave shape, it's easy to find inversions for chord shapes. Here's my original root position. Move the root up an octave and I get first inversion. Move that next note, the third up an octave and I get second inversion. And those are close voicing, so I could spread them out and get an open voicing. So that's down major. Let's see what other kinds of things there are. What do we do with chords to use the other thirds? Waiting here for our tech person to get up there. There we go. There we go. Uh, other triads, okay. Uh, so let's go with uh, up major. Uh, sorry, up minor is the next one I'll show you. And then in open voicing. Uh, down minor. Yeah, open voicing of that. Kind of has an interesting bluesy sound. And here's the up major, or just up chord. It has an aggressive, edgy sound. I could imagine it working in punk rock or heavy metal. As we'll see later, adding a seventh and or a ninth makes it a little less harsh. So those were all root positions. You can find inversions moving octaves around. It, the logic is pretty consistent. So despite so many notes, it's actually really easy and comfortable to find your way around on this. There are also sus4 and sus2 chords. Those are the only two triads on the standard guitar that are really in tune with the harmonics. No wonder they're so popular. And they're great on the kite guitar too. So. Second and the fourth, the sus four. And since I can resolve to such a nice blended regular major chord, the down major, that really fits well. So all six triads we just covered, close positions. Here's a two, and then the down minor up minor, down major, up major, and the four. That's the notes that I've got right in an order. So that's my set and nothing else is in the way. Chord progressions. Let's look at a common chord progression. Uh, C, G, A minor, F. 
In Roman numeral notation, that's one, five, six minor, four. Let's translate these same chords to the kite guitar. So using traditional harmonies, major becomes down major, minor becomes up minor, and the song sounds familiar, just sweeter. So C becomes C down, A minor becomes down A up minor, etc. Why down A? Because the F chord, graphic? Oh, sorry. Yeah. And the C chord contain this chord. Yeah, there you go. I happen to have forgotten to play in the key of C, but since everything is isomorphic, it's easy to move to whatever key. And uh, I think more in terms of numbers than in letters in general. And Speaking of often, numbers. yeah, and so often, just when I'm talking about this, we know the context. I don't give the full down, up, and up minor and everything. Technically, it's down, uh, one down, five down, down six up minor, and then four down. But I'll usually just say one, five, six, four, like normal. Oh, one more thing. Uh, we don't write the a minor chord with a lowercase Roman numeral because a lowercase V looks too much like a down symbol. So maybe you'll follow some of this, but I want you to notice I'm going to play a piece for you. The physical logic on the instrument here works really smoothly. Like I can play a chord and it shares certain notes. and There's just a couple shapes. And they move around very logically. And maybe you can follow this chart, but I'm going to play a simple arrangement of green sleeves here. Cool. Um, so uh, I wrote a piece that uses all four kinds of triads, and I believe we have a video clip with uh, Dietrich Timmy.
seventh chords. With seventh chords, the kite guitar really shines. Here are the four harmonic sevenths, analogous to the, se the same four harmonic thirds we had from before. The down major seven, the down minor seven, I'll start with, sorry. And then the up minor seven. Down major seven. And up major seven. And that's really tense because it's so close to an octave, but it works really well melodically. So how do these sevenths fit into chords? Aaron, uh, can you play that seventh chord from the harmonic series? So that's called a down seven chord. You know, a conventional dominant seventh chord has a major third, a perfect fifth, and a minor seventh. Adding the word up or down to the conventional chord name raises or lowers the third, sixth, and seventh, but not the root or fifth. So the down seven chord has a down major third, a perfect fifth and a down minor seventh. Yeah, so here's this close voicing I just did. Root third, fifth, seventh. Specifically, root down third, fifth, down seven. And I can move my fourth finger over an octave to get a nice open voicing. Root fifth, seventh, tenth. So we call this the high three voicing. And that's nice in the sense that it kind of hides that interesting seventh, and so it's more subtle. It still blends, but it's in the middle voice more. You could also move your uh, second finger down an octave, or down, yeah, to get a low five voicing. There's a lot of others we could do too. Uh, so the next part of that, one of the little detail, that. If I leave out the root, this is a diminished triad that actually blends quite nicely. We'll so talk more about other... that another time. Sorry. <laughs> so what, are, what other seventh chords are there? Well, in general, the third matches the seventh. Up goes with up and down goes with down. Yeah, so the conventional minor seven chord could usually would usually be translated to an up seven. That's the more traditional sound. It also could be uh, the down. Voicing. Oh, oh, you, oh, sure, sure, yeah. So there's the close. That's the closed voicing. Here's more open voicing. Nice sound, also. We could also make it the down minor. And here's more open voicing of that. Now that one actually sounds nice with a flat five, also. That's an interesting nice sound. And the conventional dominant seventh chord, that one that I've been doing can be the down seven, but also we could make it the more edgy up seven, which does sound better with the ninth added. So that's one of my favorite chords, but I'm more likely to resolve from an up seven than to it. So here's up minor seven to up nine and back. Down major seven is really nice and wistful. So here's, here's a nice example of it.
So all these seventh chords can be voiced high three, low five, etc. Here's a recap. Yeah, I won't. I don't play them all, but that would be interesting to explore. Just sake of time. Um, there's a lot more, of course, and there's other new chords waiting to be discovered. So don't be afraid to experiment. Uh, I'll play quickly a cool progression that uses some of these seventh chords. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, that was the idea. Sorry. Jumping ahead. Whoa. So we've only had time to see a little bit of what the kite guitar can do today. We focused on harmonies a lot. Of course, there's melodic things we could explore if we had more time. Non-Western stuff, maybe. Well, uh, later we'll also discuss some of the challenges that come up in translating familiar songs to 41 Edo. So go ahead, check out our website, kiteguitar.com, where you can access all the growing resources, register for updates, and other cool stuff. All right. Hey, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Great. We will um, join so another chat and see if we can stop answer any questions. Stop stream. Stop YouTube video. Okay. Let's give them another round of applause, or a round of applause. <laughs> There's been lots of rounds of applauses in the, in the chat. Yeah, thank you. So cool. Ooh. So um, I, I think that they're going to join this room for maybe a little bit of a Q&A, but there's going to be a longer, as you can see, they really um, <laughs> have, you know, broken this down and explored a lot of the facets. Um, I think this is like one of six different um, demonstrations that they have. They have like a six part demonstration. So um, I think on the 28th, um, uh, if you registered for this one, you'll get an email about um, that event, um, which um, you know will be a, a casual kind of Q and A. So you can ask questions, um, and uh, so I encourage you to come to that. Oh, here they are; they're coming. Okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> um, great job, guys! That was amazing. <laughs> um thank you yeah i just uh I, I told everybody about the 28th if they're registered they'll you know get another email about that and they can ask questions you're welcome to stay now and ask questions i i need to go <laughs> but thank anyone, you so much for hosting yeah thank you um i i thought there was one other thing i wanted to say oh yeah thank you thank you for everyone to everyone who attended today um uh, thank you for you know lending your your eyes and your ears and your attention and patience um, 
Yeah, I hope you learned a lot. I'm I'm sorry about in the middle on uh, the live streaming kind of stopped a few times. I think it was because I'm streaming and then and there was, everyone had their video off and I think Jitsi thought that you know. But I I, I figured this, it out. This is amazing. This is the sci-fi future we all dreamed of. Yeah. <laughs> some future generation. Um, I'm gonna stop the YouTube stream. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks everyone for watching and uh, you'll have this, you can watch it later. Might yeah, I, I suppose for now, since we don't have to go, although Devin, so long, thanks again. Um, if people post things in the side,